Hey folks, Pastor Troy here, Raven Ministries International, out here finishing up my daily five, putting the time in five miles around this track every single day. You know, years ago, uh, man, I just kind of, you know, got myself way out of shape. Um, I gained a, a significant amount of weight. I mean, nearly 300 pounds. I was like 290 something pounds. And uh, just feeling bad, just sluggish all the time. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about something. The scripture tells us, I think it was in Proverbs 4.23, I think it says, it says, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. In other words, in other words, it determines the course of your, your life. You guard your heart. Well, when I allowed myself to get so out of shape, um, really it affects your heart. That's the main thing that it, it begins to affect. It causes high blood pressure, you know, high hypertension, you know, it can cause heart disease, diabetes and things of that nature that are just not good on your heart. And the scripture tells us, you know, obviously it's talking spiritually, guard your heart. You know, it's funny when I was uh, when I was doing that and I wasn't guarding my physical heart, you know, I was eating. I just wasn't eating the right things. And I was busy, but I just wasn't busy doing the right things. I, I moved around a lot because I was pastoring. And I, had, I was on the go, but it wasn't the right kind of moving around. And so even though I was doing things, I wasn't doing the right things. You know, thinking about that as I was going around today, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we go to church and we're eating the right, we're eating things. It's just not the right things. You know, we may uh, go to church, we may sing a song, we may even read scripture, but uh, we're just not healthy. Uh, we're doing a lot of things, but it's really not benefiting us. It's, it's like we've become a busy body rather than busying our body within the, the ranks of the body. And so the scripture tells us to guard our hearts. So just as we do that uh, physically, you know, we need to do that spiritually as well. You know, a few weeks ago, we were up in uh, New York City doing some ministry. And, you know, here I am. I live in, in, in New Orleans, out in the community a lot. But as we sit there out in the, the marketplace of, of, of New York and, and just some of the, the, the communities sitting outside of cafe, witnessing, talking to people or whatever else, I, I noticed them, you know, number one, there in Manhattan, people are walking all the time. People are on the move. And as a result of that, even though, I mean, there's great food there of every persuasion, every type of thing all over, from all over the world, I didn't see a lot of really obese people. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't. See, it wasn't like everybody was a, a a fitness model, but I just did not see the level of obesity that I see in my own city. I get here, uh, you know, ministering in Manhattan on a on a Thursday by Friday night. Uh, we're, we're on Bourbon Street, and I noticed just the difference in the physical composition of people in the South. Lots of very extremely heavy people. Well, this isn't a walking culture there, even though they take public transportation, they're walking up and down stairs and subways they're, they're on the move. And so it it benefits them in one way or another. Well, you know, the same thing happens, I believe, in, in spiritual conditions as well. You know, we, we move a lot and but we're really not moving in a profitable way. We're ingesting a lot of things, but those things are just setting sedentary and they're causing us to just become you know, spiritual slobs. And we're really not growing and developing. So what's the key behind all that? You know, Scripture says, guard your heart above all things. Well, I, I, you know, coming around this track, just thinking about some some issues that, you know, I, I deal with and have to have to help deal with on a regular basis. You know, the scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so whatever's in your heart is going to eventually come out of your mouth. I, I tell people all the time, hang out with me long enough. You're going to hear about Jesus. You're going to hear about my wife. You're going to definitely hear about all my grandbabies, you know, because I love them. So that's what's always on the forefront of my heart. But, you know, I was thinking about, you know, in James, that, that talks about the tongue is a fire. It's a world of iniquity that, 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 that the world is set on fire by it. And out of it are, are the fires of hell. And so it's that tongue. But James also said that, that a man that's able to bridle his tongue is like a perfect man. And so your, your heart condition is always evidenced by what is coming out of your mouth. Folks, listen, we live in such a, a, a Christian culture of, of slander and of gossip and of backbiting and of sowing of seeds of discord. You know, I think about what Proverbs tells us. It says that there's six things the Lord hates and seven are an abomination unto him. And it's one of those is those that sow seeds of discord among the brethren. The way that's done is with our tongue. We, we say those things with our, with our mouths. And, um, you know, th those things are detestable unto God. Those things are just uh, things that just break the heart of God because they break the body of Christ. And so, folks, listen, I, I believe that God really desires us to guard our heart and to bridle our tongue. You know, if you can't say something uh, good about somebody in the body of Christ, why are you saying it? You know, and again, I've talked about this as a, as a pastor, you know, sometimes you've just got that, 
that, that bullseye on you. And people have so many, many things to say except to you. And, you know, it, it'd be easy at times to get jaded and say, listen, I'm not going to allow anybody to get close to me anymore because when I do, it's like they, they, they turn on me and they back back. Folks, listen, you got to allow every relationship to really function independent of other relationships and guard your heart because you'll get jaded and you'll push people away and you'll say, well, I was hurt there. And I, and I hear people say, I don't go to church because I was church hurt. Well, they don't stop eating because they got a bad meal at a restaurant. And so we're going we're gonna to turn away from the body because one person did something or we're going to we're going to say we're going to castigate the whole body and say the whole body is guilty because of one person's offense. Folks, listen, we're the body made up of many parts. And, you know, those uncomely parts, those weak parts, so, sometimes they need a little bit more uh, honor. They need a little bit more care. And you've got to nurture those a little bit more. But, folks, really, the key to every bit of that guarding our heart is guarding our tongue. You know, he says, you know, that's it's not what goeth into the mouth that defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defiles a man. Have you allowed your vain communication to come out of your mouth? Have you allowed perverse communication? And, and I'm not talking about prof profanity and, and, and things. I'm talking about slander. I'm talking about gossip. I'm talking about bearing false witness against folks. Uh, you know, Scripture says don't receive an accusation against an elder, a pastor, a leader without being confirmed by two or three witnesses. Do you do that? Do you, do you hear about somebody, you know, a pastor or something on the Internet, and, and suddenly you just get on board with all that? Folks, listen, the Bible calls that an abomination. The Bible says that, that those things are from the fires of hell, and they'll defile the whole body. I just really want to encourage you today, watch your tongue, because it's going to affect every single thing about you. And what it does, it sets on fire the body. It begins to bring uh, uh, division. It brings brings corruption. Uh, sometimes, you know what, if you don't got something good to say, but sometimes you just got to cut off those, those those relationships that have the potential to be toxic. That doesn't mean you hate somebody. That doesn't mean anything or you mean ill will. It just means that, listen, I know if I get around a certain person or if I'm focused on a certain person, man, it just opens up a doorway that I don't want open. And so, you know what, I'm going to love them. I'm going to pray with them or pray for them. Uh, from afar, man, God bless them. God use them, but I can't find my, I can't put myself in those those conversations and those situations that are going to cause me to be defiled and defile other people. Once again, you know, guard your heart. Out of it flows the issues of life. It sets the course. Where are your words leading you? Where are they taking you in your walk with Christ? What fruit are they producing in your heart and life? Scripture says, if you bridle your tongue, you're like a more perfect man. So. Work on bridling your tongue. Work on focusing on Jesus, allowing things that are edifying, love those things that are a blessing, love those things that are encouragement to flow out of your life. Once again, PT here uh, doing the Daily Five and coming to you, uh, just giving you some things that God's speaking to me. Anyway, God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus.